distribution will give us a clue as to what statistical test we can use. So if we're not certain whether our sample is normally distributed um, and uh, we want to check that, we can do the kilmogorov smirnov test uh, which assesses the normality of distribution of scores um, across um, um, a set of scores with the same mean and standard distribution. If the test is non-significant, so I, if P is, is great 0 0.05, the sample is not significantly different and is normally distributed. If it is, you use parametric. If it's not, you use non-parametric. And as we all know, you would always use non-parametric on categorical and ordinal data. So there's your Kilmogorov smirnov test. Don't you just love it? That was looking at whether um, how many shoes you've got and how many pets you own is normally distributed. Um, so that's what, you're, that's what it would look like in SPSS, and this is how you would report it. I told you about the jargon. The test statistic for the kilmogorov smirnov test is denoted by a D, capital D, and you must also report the degrees of freedom in brackets after the D. And degrees of freedom is always your sample size minus one. And the reason it's minus one, and it's the best, the best explanation I've ever seen of it, if we all left this room and then I came in and sat down. I could sit anywhere, but I've chosen a chair now. Everybody else can come in and sit down, and you can sit anywhere but where I am. So your degrees of freedom is the number of chairs in this room minus the one I'm sitting in. Does that make sense? You have to think about it a bit. It's a bit esoteric. <laughs> but basically, what it's saying is... Um, and it gives you a clue to the sample size as well. So degrees of freedom is always capital N minus 1. Um, and if we were going to talk about the test we've just done, the number of shoes owned was 1.6, P was, great, was less than 0 0.05, and the number of pets owned was 1.7, P was greater than 0 0.001. So both were significant, significantly non-normal. And that means we can't assume a normal distribution in our tests, and so we should use non-parametric data. Now, because I know the data, because I entered the data, um, I understand that because we had a really wide range on both shoes and pets. Um, so we had some people who only owned two pairs of shoes, and some people, me, who owned 95 pairs of shoes. So that's not a normal distribution. Um, and it was the same with pets. We'd had some people who had had up to 20 pets in their lifetime. God knows what they were doing to the poor things. Um, and, and some people who, who, de who decided to count fish and so had 30 or more because they got a fish tank full of fish. Some people who didn't count the fish. You know. So it was, it, I knew the data. Um, and I think that's also important if you're doing data, because data entry is the most tedious thing in the world. But it's a good thing to do because then you really, really know your data. Um, qualitative researchers say the same thing when it comes to transcription of interviews. Um, so that didn't surprise me, but it, it confirmed what I knew.